It's time for X's and O's with Vikings head coach Mike Zimmer on the Minnesota Vikings radio network. Now, from the TCO studios in Egan, here is the voice of the Vikings. Paul Allen. Mike Zimmer, head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, and indeed your surely Paul Allen, the play-by-play guy. X's and O's provided by the Minnesota Lottery. Get pumped. It's game time. And speaking of getting pumped, th- this is maybe the X's and O's version of kind of a public service announcement, just like a well-being check. You're, you're 65 years of age, and you have a slight limp. Should, should, should you be shoving men half your age at any time of your life, especially highly conditioned athletes? Well, you know, Paul, I'm one of those guys, when I get pushed, I push back. <laughs> <laughs> you always have been that way. And, yeah. You know, this, this truly is just uh, kind of a health and well-being check, just looking out for you. H- Hagen has been concerned ever since that moment, just about your mental and physical uh, wherewithal. And Kirk never says you like that, ever. He never does that bit. And you got that bid. I mean, how <laughs> privileged are you? Yeah, it's not the first time I've gotten it from him. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because there was plenty to like in that game against the uh, Detroit Lions, specifically the uh, the way it finished. Now, uh, you know, wins like Sunday and big-time emotion have been known to trigger good things for teams. And it doesn't matter who, it just matters what, in my opinion. Do, do you sense that with these guys? Yeah, well, I, I think... Um, you know, there was a sense of relief that we, we won the game. Um, I, I do think in the locker room after the game, there was a sense of, uh, you know, we, we got a good, we got one today. Um, we got a long way to go. We need to get back to work. And so, um, you know, I, I do feel like, um, you know, sometimes you got to catch a break to get, to get on a roll. And, and we caught a break last week. And, and be, being a head coach, obviously, you have to be detail-oriented. I mean, that's the whole job and then the game and everything. But kind of the overarching view is what I was getting at there is that, sure, there are details. You'd, you'd prefer there was no fumble and, you know, and the guy hit the kick and just things during the course of the game. But nevertheless, overarching view galvanizing and getting people together it just that's just what i feel you know happened after that game yeah i think so um you know i think we have a, a strong belief in this in this football team um you know we've we've hit on early we're hitting offensively and maybe not as good defensively and in the last few weeks we've been good on defense and maybe not as good on offense and so you know trying to combine that obviously it has a lot to do with who we're playing Mm -hmm. every week but uh, trying to combine those two things together uh, getting on a roll together and and getting this thing kind of with on the uh, railroad tracks here. So Zim from from after the game on Sunday through Monday when they all get together you watch it and then Monday and Tuesday you practice today Wednesday Carolina coming up this Sunday at noon KFAM. The kicker, do you treat him like a no-hitter? I mean, do do you just like not look at him, talk to him? What do you do? No, I mean, uh, you know, he goes out there and it's business as usual. We expect him to make it and and obviously he did and so that that was a good thing. But, uh, you know, I I feel like, um, you know, when when we got back uh, Sunday after the game, talked to the team on Monday. One of the things we talked about was finishing, and we were able to finish in that ball game. And then, uh, you know, we had a lot of projects to do offensively and defensively on, on where we, you know, where we're missing little areas, and so how we can how we can get better there. But um, so so far so good. With the Carolina Panthers, when when they don't have leading tackler Shaq Thompson, what, what do they miss? Well, he's a very athletic linebacker that can really run. Um, you know, their their defense, they play very, very hard. They give you a lot of different looks. They've got two really good edge rushers. Um, they put a lot of pressure on you, and, and they play a lot of single high coverage. You, uh, you know, a lot of man-to-man, a lot of three-deep zone, um, and they're very sticky on their coverage. So they're, they're going to sit on a lot of routes. Uh, you know, we, gotta, we, get, we have to make them... Um, uh, respect our receivers well at, at halftime of that philadelphia game they lose to philadelphia there was a block punt in there too i mean they're dominating like like what flipped in that game well you know it's just it, it's the same thing you know turnovers philly had t- got two turnovers on them um you know and i think that uh you know they philly plays very hard we're gonna have to play very hard next week in, in order to beat these guys we got to fly around in the football and but same thing offensively you know um i think kirk will have to make some plays with his legs this week and uh he'll get some opportunities because you know they're, they're rushing five and six guys a lot and they're 
there's some lanes in there for him. I know it's early in the week. Mike Zimmer, X's and O's, KFAN, Vikings Radio Network, and Vikings.com, and only one day of practice. But just gut feeling, do you think you'll get Christian McCaffrey this week? Yeah, we're planning on it. And, and when Christian is full throttle and, and completely healthy and just atop his game, what does he do really well? Well, he, he's very slithery. Uh, we really liked him coming out of the draft. You know, he, he's, he's, he makes you miss because he, he, he picks his feet up really nice, but he catches the ball. He runs, runs great routes, uh, you know, so we're going to have to do a great job in the, in the pass game on him. They'll use him in screens. They'll use him out spread out wide. But uh, when he comes out of the backfield, he's really dangerous, and he, he does a great job running the football. You, uh, you beat Sam Darnold in 2018 when he was with the Jets. Gunther beat him last year as defensive coordinator for the Raiders, what's working well for Sam Darnold this year? Well, I think what they're what they're doing basically offensively is they're they're sticking to the things that he does really well. You know, he's they're going to run the boots and they're going to run the the uh, some of the RPOs, and then um, you know in the passing game they 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 have certain concepts that they really like, and they've got some good receivers. When when, when I saw you after the Lions game, you were with your mom. And um, as you were walking out to the parking lot, you just seemed exhausted. I mean, did, did, did they, do, do all the games take that much out of you mentally? Or did, did I just like see you at a completely exasperated moment? Or did the shove really get you? <laughs> no, it wasn't the shove. It was, uh, <laughs> you know, every game is like that. There's, there's probably thousands of decisions that you have to make throughout the course of the game and you don't have a lot of time to make them um, you know some of it's on special teams some of it's on offense some of it's on you know all of it's on on defense uh, you know and they get on the ball and you got to make a call quick and then you got to adjust the different things and you got to do the same thing offensively so uh, there's so many things that goes on that e even taken for, for granted the coin toss you know it's like all right which way do we want to kick we, you know do we want to defer do we want to take the ball do we, you know there's just a million decisions that you end up making and so um it's you know i've come in my office many times after the game and went whew, you know, <laughs> that was a, that was something but wait you're not going to your oh the office at the stadium yeah because i'm like holy cow if you're going to your office at tco performance center after games whoa that's well the a... bad thing was after that game last week i couldn't sleep i woke up at three <laughs> tried wow. to try to sleep went in the office at four yep. you know so. called cousins said i'm sorry i pushed you so hard <laughs> no we, we we did talk that day though yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, like every Monday we talk. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Mike Zimmer, X's and O's, Vikings Radio Network and KFAM. I, I know you have the bye week coming up, so that's the tear down, you know, because so much goes on during the week of practice just to beat a team. You tear it down, make things better. But just for right now into this Carolina game with the offense, what are some things that you'd like to see to help the offense catch fire? Well, I, I think, Paul, we... we you know, I had the offensive coaches do a lot of a lot of studies on Monday after the game. Uh, you know, coming out of the locker room, the possessions in the second half, um, uh, some of the things. You know, what what is our tendencies on on first and possession? What's our tendencies on earn first down? Um, in in the running game, have we gotten away from the things that we do really really well and and start scheming to some some of the other other areas because of what we're doing? Um, third downs, where where are we at there? You know. Uh, Go go through the third downs. Give me all those all those um, situations, and so um, you know we ta we've talked about it this week and about uh, you know second and long wh where we're at. What are we doing after a penalty? What are we doing after a sack? Mm. Um, you know, just a, a conglomerate of things. Uh, you know, how can we how can we use the this week better uh, than what what we have been in the last couple of weeks, maybe offensively. Now, now, with this question about Cousins, you know, I'm conceding I have no idea what the what what the connection is from play call to huddle to line to ready and just everything that happens. But when it comes to flexibility at the line, would 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 he, would you would it ever be permitted for him to like do more or call a game at the line? Well, I think you know, a few years ago he had a lot, a lot of flexibility, and uh, you know there was it, it, it was it was a lot of stuff for him. He can handle it, um, but it was an awful lot of stuff for him. And he does a lot of, at the line of scrimmage. He he changed one of the, the protections uh, last week. You know he's changed several plays, and um, so I you know and that's one of the things we talked about is being able to go from uh, some more run to pass, more pass to run, different things based on on. Uh, on some of the coverage that we're getting. Last week we got a lot of uh, uh, 
cover two to Justin Jefferson. Yeah. And so, you know, how are we going to attack that as opposed to uh, checking the ball down? Time for two more with, uh, with your tight end, Chris Herndon. It, do, do you sense that he's pressing to do well because he gets minimal snaps and, and clearly wants to play more? Yeah, I, I don't think he's pressing. I, I think he wants to do well, but I don't think that he's pressing. You know, the, the, the one penalty he had, uh, you it know. It was bogus. Well, yeah. I mean, he had his hands like this, and then he pulled off. And then the second one, you know, was just a, a mistake on his part because he's lined up at the wing as opposed yeah. on the tight end. He cut the defensive end, and, um, you know, so, um, you know, I, don't, I think it was just a mistake. Is, uh, is Mackenzie Alexander playing the best he's played in his career right now? Um, yeah, I would say so. Um, you know, he's he's doing a lot of good things. Uh, you know, there's there's times when he can be a little tighter in coverage. You know, we like him to be, but understanding where we're, what we're doing and where we're going, I think he's done a nice job. And lastly, as as your defense truly and and just really clicked with safety Xavier Woods of late, ten tackles against Cleveland. It just he seems like he's so active and he's around everything. You know? Yeah, I, th I think you know. Um, he struggled in the open field a little bit against um, um, Seattle, uh, a couple, and he's really made a conscious effort to um, make sure that he gets in the right place. To, and and the, these open field tackles on these great athletes are hard, uh, but he's done a great job. He's been great in communication. He works really well with Harrison, and he, he's done a nice job when we've asked him to blitz as well. Uh, great chat. Thank you very much. Best of luck against the Panthers. All right. Thanks, Paul. Mike Zimmer, head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, special teams coordinator Ryan Ficken around the corner. It's X's and O's on the KFAN Minnesota Vikings. X's and O's on the KFAN Minnesota Vikings radio network continues. A very special guest joined in us shortly, but first, get pumped up and say, I'm in to the new Vikings scratch games from the Minnesota Lottery. Must be 18 or older to play. And Vikings fans, we are turning cold with tide. Washing in cold saves money on energy bills. And if it works on NFL stains, it can work for you. Skull Tide, Skull Vikings, Skull Cold, and Skull Ryan Ficken, the special teams coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings. You, uh, you were a wide receiver in college at Arizona State University, and I know being here a decade and a half, you've had multiple tasks, but settled into special teams coordinator and after working with Prefer starting in 2013. Why special teams? You know, uh, talking with Coach, when he lost his uh, assistant back in uh, 2013, I was quality con control coach with the offense and, you know, learning uh, from George Stewart with the wide receivers and that staff. And there's an opening with, uh, with Coach Prefer, and he asked if I want to go ahead and uh, join him with special teams. And I thought it was just a great opportunity to go ahead and continue to learn more football. Uh, you know, I was on the offensive, si offensive side and also the defense side on, uh, at UCLA. But just another opportunity to go ahead and um, learn more football under one of the best special teams coaches around. And uh, so I was very excited for that challenge and uh, wanted to go ahead and, uh, you know, take that, you know, and try and better myself in, uh, in this profession. And, and being multifaceted, obviously very important, specifically in a profession like this. I mean, our mutual friend Kevin Stefanski, Cleveland Browns head coach, I mean, run, what, running backs coach, tight ends coach, I mean, everything except O-line, but as tight ends coach, you're an extension of the O-line, a quarterback's coach, whole thing, that, uh, that that's a great route to take. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's a great opportunity to go ahead and, you know, to learn other positions, but to get to know the team and, you know, kind of figure out how they can go ahead and tick and what you can um, get the most out of uh, each player in each position and just to see how the whole uh, team uh, comes together. And, and that truly is uh, that truly is a major part of being a special teams coordinator is you're the only one that works with every single position group, which means you have a really good feel for like, you know, not only the team, but, you know, kind of what everybody's thinking. Yes. I mean, you got to go ahead and put a lot of pieces together. So, uh, you know, if a running back ends up going down in the game, then it's not just the next running backs up for us. I mean, you got to think about all the different changes that happens on the depth charts. I mean, that one change for a running back going and down could be. Well, that could be four or five, six different changes, uh, you know, with the rest of the core units and also, you know, possibly field goal, field goal block, you know, however they fit in. And uh, so you got to know each one's strengths and weaknesses and how they can go ahead and best help the team and uh, be successful. Uh, Ryan, as a husband and a dad of three, three young kids, how do you balance the arduous in-season work schedule and uh, family life? <laughs> 
Uh, that's a great question there, but uh, it's because uh, I have uh, probably one of the best uh, head coaches at home in terms of my wife, I and mean, she that's she great. does a phenomenal job, uh, you know, just keeping everything in order. And, it's uh, Andrea, right? Yeah, Andrea, yeah. So oh, yeah. whenever I uh, I come home, uh, it's or in the off season, it's like, hey, we got a routine. Don't mess it up right now. Let's just yeah. go ahead and uh, just jump right in. But uh, you, know, you just gotta make the most of it uh, when you're with um, you know on those nights that you get in you know some of those Friday nights and Thursday nights with them. You just make the most of those situations, um, especially when you're at home, and uh, just go ahead and, uh, and then in the off season you go ahead and play catch up. I um I asked them the the same question I'm going to ask you, Greg Joseph, the kicker. Do do we handle him like a no hitter? I mean, like do do you just not talk to him? Do you not? I mean, what do you do? I mean, when when he's going as well as he is right now. You know, I think it, it depends on the situation. I mean, he's a pro, and he doesn't – I know every kick is obviously important, but he's got to approach each kick the same, uh, regardless if it's an opening game, PAT, to a 55-yarder, to a game winner. He's got to approach each kick the same, and I'm not going to handle him any differently, but I'll kind of just kind of, fit, you know, see what his demeanor is and see how he's doing and just kind of watch him afar and then go ahead and, uh, you know, interject uh, when I see best fit to go ahead and uh, help him in any situation. But he's doing a tremendous job uh, the whole – uh, operation, they're doing a great job. The team, and I mean, protecting. You can't take that for lightly in terms of the field goal protection. And uh, you know, just uh, we got to continue to build on it, though. Ryan Ficken, Minnesota Vikings special teams coordinator on X's and O's, and that you know that 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 leads me to what is really an underrated um, success point. I think with this team is you switch punters two weeks in front of the season. Okay, so now you got Colquitt and then you got Barry, uh, but nevertheless, you have the battery on the kicks. And you had to get that battery going quickly. How, I mean, how does that happen? You know, it's, it, I don't want to say it's an easy transition, but it, it makes it easier when you have three pros like you, you do on the roster in terms of Barry, who's a veteran guy. He does it at a high level, and then, and it's very important to him, and uh, along with, obviously, Greg and uh, Depot. So uh, just having all three of those guys work together, they take uh, their craft seriously, and they're, you know, they're professionals, and they work hard at it. So we jumped right in, and uh, they're ready to work and uh, you know, get better because at the end of the day, they want to go ahead and be the best pros that they can be and help this team win a lot of football games. You, um, you, you've seen a lot for many years, which I love. I mean, we've talked about Percy Harvin and Devin Hester and Cordero Patterson and Marcus Sherrills and so on. So when you when you come across a kick returner who catches a kick at the three yard line by the sideline, what's the teaching moment? You know, I mean, the teaching moment for the, in the regards to the situations that happened this past week, it, it's a little unique. It just depends on the situation. Um, the first one, it was the end of the half situation, and we had him moved up a little bit anticipating a certain kick, and uh, he got over. They filled it uh, cleanly. Um, you know, we do talk about when it gets close to the sidelines, if you can establish yourself out of bounds with one of your feet and then go ahead and still catch it, then you get the ball at the 40. It's considered an extension of the out of bounds. And, yeah. uh, but he wasn't close enough to be able to do that, and I thought Amir handled himself uh, nicely in those situations. And then even at the end of the game, uh, with the hands, uh, you know, kick. It was just a great kick by their kicker. I mean, put about four, like you were saying, four or five yards from the uh, sideline. And uh, it was a great job by Amir getting to the kick because we've seen a lot of times where that ball's bounced at the five-yard line and then worked up field to the eight. And then even this past week uh, where then they get tackled at the 10 or the 11. So with our hands unit out there where, you know, they're not the kickoff return unit blocking, um, you know, you get that out you know, close to the 20-yard line and you consider that a nice win for that, for that play. So Very, uh, very nice. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, very nicely explained. So what, from a kick returning standpoint, given this day and age, there's so little action. Is part of coaching guarding against or, or coaching up players to not try too hard because there's so little action or they just want to go? Yeah, I mean, we want to make sure we, we put them in all these situations in practice so they can go ahead and have that success out there in the field. And we talk through it. We might not be able to uh, rep everyone, but you can at least discuss it, watch it on tape with them, sit down and talk to them through, you know, every situation. And, and so they, they're best equipped to be successful in those situ situations that arise. As a special teams coordinator, now the Carolina Panthers this weekend, well, they had a punt blocked last game against Philadelphia. Do you look at that like, ah, darn it, because now, now they're going to get everything all buttoned up. You, you know, uh, you know that's you, you. You think so? I mean, you, you think that they're going to put a little bit more emphasis on it. But at the end of the day, I mean, I look at the situation. If that was the roles are reversed, I mean, I'm still going to go ahead and approach each situation, each each game. Uh, you know, with the same uh, respect in terms of protection and coverage, and and uh, making sure we're, we're uh, uncovering every stone and making sure that there are no issues and no seams. Um, so we're we're not going to approach any differently when we go ahead and attack it. And um, you know, if a situation arises, uh, you know, hopefully we uh, go ahead and execute. And I, I believe in our players that they can go ahead and do that. The former Badger Alex Erickson handling yes. punts and kicks for them. Yeah, he he came from uh, Cincinnati. You know, oh, Cincinnati. Had, thank you. Yeah, but 
No, no, you're correct though. Oh. University, but uh, he was in sit with the Bengals first, right. and then. Uh, and you saw so, him in a preseason game, and he did something good. Yeah, I mean, he he was very. Uh, I mean, he's had a really productive career as a returner. I mean, he's a he's a very uh, you know um, very efficient, uh, productive returner, and he's a slippery guy. And so we got to make sure we do a great job, uh, you know, covering him. But he has our attention, uh, and we got to make sure we do a great job covering him. Well, hopefully, you're not in onside kick situations, but if you are. Is it virtually impossible this day and age to recover an onside kick with five guys on each side of the kicker? In terms of our kickoff? Yeah. Kick, uh, well, now with the rule changes, they actually move the guy out of that box. Ooh. So now you can only have nine guys up front uh, before you could have as many as you want. Uh, so you, can't, you have to have at least eight, and now you, you can't have any more than nine. So you have to have eight or nine. So, yeah. uh, so there's one less guy in there. And um, so it's actually uh, put a little bit more difficulty in terms of recovering those kicks now wow. because one less guy up there blocking for the guy to go ahead and recover it. So you know, the league want to go ahead and make that a little bit more valuable play in terms of um, changing the percentage of recovery rate. But uh, so yeah, there's been some uh, more recoveries I think this year, uh, you know, through week five. So, uh, but it, it is uh, and a more more exciting play, I guess. Uh, you know, that's what the NFL is trying to do. Great job on the radio as usual. Uh, great job at home as usual with your beautiful family and uh, with the special teams. Continued success, okay? Oh, I appreciate it, Pierre. Ryan Ficken, special teams coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings, and I'm Paul Allen. Uh, we thank everybody at the Vikings Entertainment Network. We thank Brett Blakemore and Eric Nordquist with KFAN, and we thank you for listening. The Vikings take on the Panthers at noon for the boom this Sunday from Charlotte, then the bye. Make sure you listen to it all right here on the KFAN Minnesota Vikings Radio Network.